Check this out. Ukraine now has the high ground with a new Czech satellite. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. The Czech Republic is preparing to hand Ukraine a modern military-grade Earth observation satellite. Not a rented data package, not a one-off tasking window, an actual satellite program built to give Kyiv persistent eyes from space in all weather, day or night. If you're wondering whether this matters, it does. Whoever sees first, survives first. Hey friends, Wes here, military veteran of the U.S. Army's 101st Airborne Division and the U.S. Air Force, where we live in fame or go down in flame because... I'll admit, I still get a little choked up when I hear the Mormon Tabernacle Choir sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Anyways, Prague says this satellite project launches in the coming months, with the satellite expected to orbit within a year. The Czech Ministry of Foreign Affairs calls it proof of Czech technology depth and a very public act of solidarity with Ukraine. The Ministry of Transportation adds that this could grow into a wider constellation, which is a polite Czech way of saying, Today one bird, tomorrow a flock. So why this helps Ukraine right now is straightforward. The satellite will carry a combined surveillance payload, synthetic aperture radar for all-weather imaging, electro-optical sensors for sharp daytime and clear sky shots, radiation detection to flag nasty industrial signatures, and radio frequency monitoring to map emitters. That cocktail means you do not care if the battlefield is under cloud, under smoke, or under Russian electronic warfare. You still get a usable picture. You still find the launchers and the depots. You still cue the strike package. If you are an artillery officer near Kupiansk, this is the part where you start labeling your ammo boxes from Prague with love. Leading Czech firms with flight heritage are on the build. Their hardware has already flown on international missions. The satellite synthetic aperture radar lets Ukraine see through cloud and darkness. The electro-optical telescope gives fine detail when the weather cooperates, and the RF payload can geolocate transmitters like air defense radars and long-range drone control nodes. And the radiation detector can flag chemical or explosive processes that should not be happening near a tractor shed. The architecture here matters. A single bird gives daily access and rapid retask if you plan it well, but a mini constellation turns that access into persistence. Let's start with scale. Start with one, scale to several, and blend the feeds into a unified platform that Ukrainian commanders can query from the brigade talk without calling three foreign help desks. That's not imagery, that's sovereign tasking. Now, since the first days of the invasion, Ukraine has been a master of coalition data. Commercial providers and friendly governments have supplied imagery and analysis. It works, but sometimes it's a relay race. You submit a task, you wait for a satellite pass, you get a product, and the enemy has already moved the fuel trucks and painted the roof green. A sovereign satellite, even a small one, changes the geometry. You set the tasking, you own the priority, you fuse the output into your own kill chain without diplomatic middle step. And there's a second order effect here. Sovereign access is not just faster, it's safer. If a provider somewhere gets cold feet about certain targets, Ukraine's own satellite still flies. That removes political friction, it removes export license roulette, and it removes time. In this war, time is a more valuable commodity than JP8. So let's talk about one of my favorite topics on this channel, kill chains, because that's where space earns its paycheck. A satellite pass takes a radar image of a suspected ammo rail yard near Bryansk. The RF payload tags increased radio chatter from a nearby Russian air defense radar. Hours later, an electro-optical pass finds fresh track marks and new pallets on the siding. The fusion platform flags a confidence score and pushes an alert to a strike desk inside Ukraine. The desk picks a window. Drones launch to soak up point defenses. Fighters threaten any radar that lights up with anti-radiation missiles and a pair of storm shadows head for the correct building not just the postal code. That is modern targeting, and it starts with persistent space sensing married to a national decision loop. Even on the purely defensive side, a weather agnostic radar satellite tracks blast scars on runways and burn marks on SAM sites. You can confirm last night's battle damage, retask mobile batteries to exploit gaps, and shift air routes around 
the fresh holes. Nothing magical, just relentless situational awareness. If that sounds like a lot, having the high ground, it is. Only the hilltop is 500 kilometers up. Now, space is not new to Ukraine. The difference now is control. Ukraine has been resourceful about space access since day one. A quick roundup, because context matters. In 2022, Ukrainians famously crowdfunded access to a Finnish SAR satellite, ICI, buying a dedicated tasking share and priority time that is paid for itself many times over. Ukrainian agencies and analysts have worked with commercial imagery from Planet to Maxar to Black Sky and others, the stuff you see in the media, but also the stuff you don't. There has been ongoing cooperation with European partners for Copernicus data and with friendly governments for classified analysis. On top of that, Ukraine and France announced an alliance to build a small Earth observation constellation with Promethe Earth Intelligence and Ukrainian tech companies, a plan that envisions a high refresh cadence and a sovereign digital platform. That is a medium-term industrial play, and it's smart. Add to that a communications pillar. SpaceX's Starlink and Starshield have kept command posts and drones online when fiber got cratered, and European partners have layered an additional SATCOM as a hedge. None of that is Earth observation, but it is the nervous system that moves the pictures to the shooters. There's also Japanese interest in a European industrial courtship. Japanese and European new space firms have explored commercial SAR and optical partnerships for Ukraine's reconstruction and security needs, discussions that make more sense once Kyiv can blend external fees with its own sovereign tasking. The more pipes you have going into the same data lake, the clearer the water. The Czech satellite is the next phase. It moves Ukraine from consumer to co-owner, from ad hoc to planned, from can you please image this box to we will be over the box at 1412 Zulu. Plan accordingly. Synthetic aperture radar is the workhorse here when the sky doesn't cooperate. It can measure tiny changes in the ground, detect vehicles and camo nets, see through smoke, and it laughs at clouds. It can't tell you the paint color, but it can tell you the mass and motion, which is what artillery officers care about. Electro optical is the detective. It confirms what SAR suspects. It reads roof geometry, it spots fresh dirt on a revetment, and it tells your planner where the weak seam is. And then radio frequency monitoring is the tattletale. It says there's a control link here, a search radar there, and a cluster of handhelds chattering after midnight over in that grove. Radiation detection is the canary, and it sings when propellant processes spike or when something ugly leaks. Fused together, they let you pick aim points with confidence and prosecute targets with fewer missiles and fewer repeats. Efficiency is not just thrift. Efficiency is how you win an industrial war. Let's use an artillery example. Artillery is a math problem. You need guns, you need shells, you need targets, and you need time. If the target arrives late or if the picture is stale, you waste shells and expose your gun's crews for nothing. Space shortens the loop. Shorter loops raise your operational tempo and higher tempo lets you dictate when battles happen. Dictate enough of those, and you start dictating where they happen. This is how defensive war turns into a war of positional advantage. You don't just hold, you make the other side react. There is another quiet benefit. The more Ukraine can task its own satellite, the less it needs to publicize requests to partners. Fewer requests mean fewer clues for Russian intel about what Kyiv cares about on a given day. OPSEC, or operational security, gets a small but meaningful boost. So, satellites do not win wars alone, but they make winning possible. Let's not pretend space is a cheat code. Satellites don't smash ammo dumps by themselves. They cue missiles, they warn the power plants, they confirm the rail choke points, and they keep score. The smashing still requires Ukrainian pilots to fly toward bad things and Ukrainian gunners to roll their pieces forward under counter-battery fire. Space makes those risks smarter and less wasteful. And in a war where both sides are rationing 155mm shells and hunting each other's logistics, that is the difference between holding and being pushed. The high ground is a place and a habit. If you are looking for the headline version, here it is. The Czech Republic is handing Ukraine a satellite designed to see in all weather, day or night, across multiple sensing domains. It is the first European country to do so for Ukraine. It is planning to scale 
and it plugs directly into the way Ukraine fights. More importantly, it accelerates a trend. Ukraine is moving from borrowed eyes to owned eyes, from occasional access to persistent access, from dependence to sovereignty. Pair that with the alliances and the partnerships already in motion, a French-backed constellation plan with Promethe, long-running commercial SAR access like ICI, and the steady stream of allied imagery and analysis, and you get a simple battlefield truth. Ukraine now has the high ground, and that makes them the king of the hill. That's it for today, my friends. Stay sharp, stay curious, and remember the side that sees first is usually the side that writes the after action report. Subscribing keeps these videos going, so be sure to click the button. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.